Hello and welcome back to the next installment of Cylinder Radio. This is the educational podcast where we model respectful conversation and discourse to highlight all perspectives on controversial issues. And my guest today is Miss Controversy. She is a successful singer, songwriter, actress, artist, entertainer, bodybuilder, everything. This is Joy Villa. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for saying my last name correctly. I didn't even coach you on that. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, Will? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for, thanks for coming. I think today, uh, uh, what we just discussed uh, before I started recording was talking about individualism. So that'll be the cylinder of, of today would be individualism because I yeah. would say that you Great are an talk. individual. Oh yeah. I am definitely an individual. I mean, all of us are individuals, mm -hmm. but I think we tend to uh, leave our individual individuality up to others to determine, you know, it starts in school, right? Clicks, groups. Oh, I'm in the cool kids. I'm in the Smokies. I'm in the Kirby's. I'm in the, this kid, whatever groups there are that has always existed clicks. And we sort of lose our individuality when we're in a group. Now groups are good, but they're one part of, of how we function as human beings. The big, biggest and most important part is who are you when you're alone with yourself? Who are you? And that's you as an individual. And having your own self-determinism is a huge thing. Self-determinism is determining what you want to do with your life, the choices you want to make based upon what you believe you should do. And it's not selfishness. It's not putting yourself above others to hurt others. It's more like, okay, I believe in my own self-integrity, my own virtues, my own values, my way of seeing the world. So I'm going to dictate how my life is going to behave based upon that. That's self-determinism. That's individuality to me. Yeah, and I think it gets tricky because I've read a lot of books like uh, The Social Leap and Tribe and uh, Sapiens, and we have evolved. Human beings are tribal. That's how we yeah. survived. That's how we got here. So when we went from you know Homo erectus and we could have branched off to be Cro-Magnon man and, and Neanderthals and stuff like that, like we became these tribal things. So we look for, for our groups and our tribes. So right. it's natural. So to try and combat that, we're combating something that's very deeply rooted in in who we are as human beings. True. And you know what, Will? The thing is, I don't think we should be fighting it or combating it at Agreed. all. Mm -hmm. I call my fan base Joy Tribe for a reason. Yeah. We're a tribe of joyful individuals who, of course, pick up my values and listen to my music and follow me. Yeah. But Joy Tribe, we are tribal and that's okay. It's not a bad thing to be tribal. It's not a bad thing to find your group. In fact, it's healthy and needed. We can't exist alone. We have to have our groups. But not to the detriment of losing yourself. You are still yourself in a group. Like for instance, I belong to many groups. Like I'm a vegan. I am a bodybuilder. I'm a recording artist. I'm a Hollywoodite or Los Angelino. Mm -hmm. um, I'm black. I'm also Italian and Argentinian. So I can, I'm Latina. I'm tall. I'm 5'10". You know, um, I'm a model. I'm an actor. I mean, I have all these different groups that I could break off and branch out and just be that person. But that's not normal life. That's what other people tell you are. Oh yeah, you're just that one thing, right? You're the bricklayer or you're the dad or you're the book seller. But the fact of the matter is we're all those things. We're, we're many facets. We're like, we're like a diamond. We're complicated and intense and sometimes chaotic beings and that's okay. So I'm all of those. I belong to all those groups, but I would never for the sake of, let's say the vegan group, um, disavow another group just because that group might believe in that. Let's say vegans say, okay, we're now against red. Let's just say collectively the vegan group I belong to just to be, just to say something silly, right? Hates red now. Vegans don't wear red because it equals animal blood. And so we're boycotting red. Well, as an individual, as an artist wh whose favorite color happens to be red, i.e. the color I'm wearing today, the color of glam, Marilyn Monroe, lipstick, Hollywood, power to me, confidence, I'm not going to stop wearing red just because this group dictates it. So if I were to lose my individuality and say, oh, well, uh, my group says I can't wear red, so I'm not going to wear red for no reason at all, because I don't believe in that. That's not my personal values and integrity. So guess what? I'm still a vegan, but I'm not going to follow that group's mandate. I'm still going to wear red and I'm going to have an argument to back that up. Hey, I believe red is confidence. I don't believe it indicates animal blood. So I still don't eat animal products, but I'm going to wear red. So that puts me at a different sort of, to me, that's a very basic argument using silly things. 
But to me, that's, that's how it is. You can be in a group, belong to a group, but you should not a hundred percent give yourself over to those individuals to dictate who you are. Never, ever. Yeah. And I think it's, it's get where it gets kind of dangerous is because you see, if you don't know a lot of people who are whatever, you don't know any vegans, right? And then you yeah. meet a vegan and they aren't very good or nice to you or something like that. Then you say, they must all be like this or whatever wow. it might be is, is you, 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 when we do group people, or, you know, we're all members of all these groups, but yeah, they're not all the same. And it's like, of course, so I know, um, I know you've been at like, um, events for uh Blexit, like the black exit the idea of yes. like, you're, you're, a, you're a conservative politically. Yes, I am. It's one of those things where it's like, well, when you take a step back, I think all of us need to go, of course, of course there's black conservatives. Of course there's, you know, right. you know, vegan conservatives, or of course there's, you know, whatever it is, like whatever these yeah. kind of overlaps are because we're human beings and we're complicated. We just, it's so much quicker to group people into groups, but it we is. have to take a step back and just be like this group, not all white people are the same. Not all vegans exactly. are the same. Not all whatever it might be are the same. And Absolutely. so a hundred percent. Well, this is the thing. It's dangerous when you get to generalities. Mm -hmm. Well, they all say, all men are dogs, right? Mm -hmm. All women love to shop. Whatever mm -hmm. your generality is, it's not going to be true. Yeah, there's stereotypes. There's certain things. A lot of women like to shop. Maybe some men can be jerks, but we know it can't be all of anything. And if you're going to say all, it'd be most people are good people. I truly believe in the goodness of humanity. Most people are good people. There's some buttheads that mess it up for the rest of us who then dictate, oh, well, that's A equals A equals A, which is like, that equals that equals that. So you could say vegans equals angry at meat eaters equals bad people equals dreadlock wearing equals liberals. Mm -hmm. And then you tend to have people from both sides and all different walks of life who throw the baby out with the bathwater. When the fact is, it's only easy and convenient for people who want to control others to put people in boxes. I don't want to put my friends in boxes. Yeah, there's going to be overlap. You're going to agree with me on this and maybe we're going to disagree on that. Maybe we have this we agree on, but not that. But the main thing, the, our general understanding is that we love spending time with each other. We respect one another's beliefs and we have fun. We make each other feel good. And if humanity looked at what we were more similar than what we were more different and embrace those differences, because I don't want my friends to think exactly like me. I tell my joy tribe in my live feeds and when I speak on stages and when I'm touring, I don't want you to think exactly like me. I don't want you to look exactly like me. That would be boring. That would drive me crazy. I want you to be different. I want you to be boldly different and individualistic. And also remember you are in a community. So we have to remember we are around other people, but it's a community made up of individuals. And the individual's rights, the individual sovereignty is important. We can't forget that. We can't say, let's steal money from everyone to help a few minority people or a few uh, small groups, right? What socialism says, let's take everybody's money mm -hmm. and disperse it. No, that's not fair to people who work hard for their money and who, who say, no, I want to have a job and I want to have a business and I want to keep the economy going. There's certain things where the individual's sovereignty gets erased. I feel like we're, we're at that point in culture to where, oh, if you want to do something different, you're considered selfish or whatever bad things you want to say. I mean, I've been called every name in the book. Truth is matter. There's a lot of people who think like me, but I don't do it because there's a lot of people who think like me. Well, I do that's, it because that's how I think. <laughs> yeah. I actually want to get to that because i um, like, there is, it's, it's kind of interesting because I think like a lot of, you came to a lot of people's attention when you wore like a dress at the great, was that at the Grammys? I was at the Grammy. Like, like, a, like a Trump supporting dress. And it was a Trump dress at the yeah. Grammys. It said, make America great again. Right. On the front and Trump on the back. And it was a Trump flag. 2007 Grammy. people, I, yeah, I think people said, you know, essentially like, oh, this is just a gimmick. And like, she wants to do this for attention. It's a, and I pause and I'm like, wait a second. She's an entertainer. She's in Hollywood. They're all doing it for attention. What are you I talking say, about? I am doing it for attention. That's why I'm on the red carpet. Exactly. Yes. I mean, like, that's, that's the thing. It's like, like, if you're on the red carpet smiling and taking pictures and stuff like that, everyone wants attention. Like, let's not pretend. Let's not, like, let's call it what it is. Okay? Now, it's not some it's for everyone. Thing. It's not like right. we're just out there, the goodness of our hearts. We want you to look at us. But it's buy our albums. That's and an interesting thing. Right. Something. You're always promoting something. Uh -huh. Anytime you step outside, you're in public, the public spotlight, you are promoting something. Yeah. So what's, here's, what's interesting is, 
um, you know, there's certain rules, even to people who are very like supposed to be very accepting and open-minded and stuff like that. There's very rules that you still have to abide by. So certain things like, um, you know, don't judge people based on the way they look, but if they have, you know, um, plastic surgery, well, that means that they're hollow and vapid and stuff like that. It's like, right. wait, yes. that's the same way. It's just the way they look. Why is that? It's so right. interesting. Like the judgments can it's like, like there's like certain things that are okay to be different and certain things that aren't. So when we're talking about individuality, like why can't you, if everyone's trying to get attention. So, you know, maybe it could be like the JLo dress where she like, you know, shows a lot of skin or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you doing this and someone else doing it. Like, why not? Like what, like, and, and I, I, I could get, you know, we could go down this political like rabbit hole of like, you know, Trump is an evil homo, you know, or uh, evil, like sexist, racist, homophobe, all that kind of stuff. Lies. But just in general, I'm just saying. Yeah, I think it's as bigger. Point. It's much bigger than yeah. politics now. It's much bigger yeah. than the 2016 election or where politics is now. This is a much bigger conversation, which I think you'll agree with, Will, mm -hmm. that, that encompasses everything. Young people, old people, it's culture. It's pop culture. It's human beings. It's how we live after this world goes, if it, if it fades away and we live on another planet, there will still be people who are going to have to make choices based on their individual rights and their individuality and how much they want to assert their own beliefs and how much they, they, they're not afraid to do that. It's a big picture of being bold and outspoken. That's what I tell all my Joy Tribe, my fans, my friends, my family. I say, you can disagree with me. It's okay. I, I welcome disagreement. I welcome discourse where we don't agree on every topic. But the fact of the matter is, I'm going to respect what you say, and you will respect what I say. You will let me say what I want to say. You will accept what I say. You don't have to agree with it, but you'll hear me out, and I'll do the same for you. And that's called social discourse, conversation. That's what's missing right now. Well, that's why I started this podcast, and that's why I started my, my social media stuff, is I, I thought Love it was... It missing in in particularly in high school because that's kind of my realm but Absolutely. people's anger towards you joy is yeah is interesting because i did like a little bit of research of you online and like you're just oh, a boy. very like i'm gonna you know um you know kiss your butt a little bit but like you're you're a very like positive smiley up very bright personality and it's like interesting that the anger to that's i I'm guessing you get like all the time is very interesting for me as like a social scientist to, 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 mm. to analyze because you are being you and people maybe would just say like, no, she's not. That's not what she really believes. It's like, that's not the way this game works. You can't. Who tells me what I believe? Exactly. You know? Yes. yes. Who tells anybody else? Like you could think, oh, well, that person's fake. You don't know. Oh, right. that person shouldn't believe that way. How would you know that? Mm -hmm. How would until you meet that person, have a conversation with them, you have no idea. We have no idea what Jennifer Lopez thinks, but we hear from the media who, mm -hmm. what she thinks about everything else, right? All these celebrities where it's like, oh, so-and-so, a source tells us that so-and-so is thinking of breaking up. I'm like, how would they know? Yeah. How the heck would they know? Yeah, maybe some friend right at the mountain got paid to do that. More likely they're making this up. They're basing upon what they see as a public image. And celebrities have gone undercover and seen that. They, they, they you know, they, they put up a wall of what they want the public to believe. And then behind the scenes, they're really thinking something different mm -hmm. it's been going on for years, right? From hiding your, your if you're gay, hiding that, yeah. fake marriages. Um, since the 20s, since the golden age of Hollywood, there's always been falsities, right? Changing the hairline. And, and bleaching the skin to look not ethnic, changing your last name to not be Jewish. Like we've seen this time and time again. And that's what, what to me ultimately breaks down the individual and breaks down the society and breaks down the communication and the community. And I mean, in high school, you're in the thick of it, Will. High school is all about the cliques. Kids mm -hmm. are trying to figure out who they are, what they believe, you know, will people like me? There's so much fear. I think it comes down to being afraid of not being accepted, being afraid of not being loved or liked. And you can't care about that. Like, I mean, in high school, I was shy. I was so shy growing up. 
I trained myself. I just talked about this with another podcaster is I trained myself through theater classes, through communication courses, through practice, through trial and error, falling flat on my face, embarrassing myself, getting back up and keep on going and knowing I do this for a reason because I'm an artist. I have to express myself and because I have a purpose to help others and to help others help themselves and express their own selves in whatever manner that is. That's my higher goal. You don't have a goal. If you don't have a purpose, it all seems meaningless. And you'll listen to and be like that, that, that re read in the wind, wherever the wind blows, you'll go left, you'll go right, you'll go forward, you'll go backwards because that's what people are telling you to do. And that's when you're lost. It wasn't until I said, you know what? Hold up. I'm going to think for myself. I'm going to go against the grain. Even though I feel alone right now, I can out create this. I can create my own sense of being and who I am because I'm an artist. I believe we can all create these things. We're created to create. That's my viewpoint. But that only happens in a society where you're not being told you're nothing and you don't matter and you have to think this way and your body's too big or too small. And all these lies that are happening are simply to sell people products. If you feel bad and depressed, we can sell you pills to make you feel happy. If you think so, you're too happy and manic, we can sell you pills to bring you down. If you feel like you're too fat, we'll sell you something to make you skinny. If you feel like you're too loud, here's a book to make you sound softer. There's all these things to try to change us. And when you just break that, the younger, the better, when you realize none of that matters, being yourself is the ultimate, most real thing. And that's actually when you get people to love you. Like when I'm like, oh, I don't care. I'm just going to be real. I'm not going to wear makeup today. I'm just going to do a live feed. I'm just going to be unfiltered. That's when my fans react the most. Oh, you're so real. You're so raw. I love this. Be like this more. And I'm like, oh, so the less effort I put in trying to be something I'm not, the better I am. Yes. Simple, but not easy. Very yeah. simple, but not easy. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of things there that I want to address. Like uh, that, that reminds me of Noam Chomsky's book, Manufacturing Consent, just basically to, to brainwash you into like being controlled by society and stuff like that. It's pretty, yeah. I, I read that and then I went to the mall and I was like, oh, look at all the advertisements. Oh, no. Like, what was <laughs> like, oh, no. But what you're saying is, is um, I learned it when I uh, married into my wife's family. Mm. It was a totally different culture and you know very What's different culture she's filipino so she okay. moved here when yeah. she was like eight years old from the philippines and i'm like yeah. as as white as white gets like it goes, white my family goes back to like the 1700s and like so like my great great uncle was like um, vice president of the united states like like wait like i'm just like oh that that's one. awesome so Which one? um his name was was william wheeler and it was okay. under um, Rutherford B. Hayes. I don't know. But anyway. The point, uh, one of the forgotten yeah. presidents. But exactly. hey, it didn't matter. Hey, he was vice president. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I married into her family, all this stuff started to, I, there was things where she, I like wanted to be accepted and she wanted to be accepted. And so you kind of have to like follow these certain rules about like what is acceptable to be like yourself and and you have to kind of still fit in like we all feel this and i know that kids feel this too like when you said that you woke up or, or you decided not to i think that people kids adults they want to see the process i have a yeah. friend who's a, a a personal trainer and he did a, does videos of like walking on his hands and walking upstairs and doesn't push ups on his hand Ooh. he's like he's like why don't he's like people don't don't love this i was like because they don't feel connected to that they yeah. want, you know what they want? They want the three months of you trying and falling over. They mm -hmm. want to do that. They want to see like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to try to learn how to walk in my hands. Watch this and you fall. And then the next day you try again and then you do it. And then you do it. like, so for my mm -hmm. audience, can you, like, you are such, you know, like, it's a very empowering thing, which you are joy, which is, this is me, take it or leave it. You get the haters, you get the people that love you, you get this and you just oh, like, yeah. Keep a smile on your face. This is who I am. I'm going to be controversial. I'm going to do something crazy. Wait, do you see what I wear this time? All y'all are going to be talking about it. Like, <laughs> all this stuff. And how do you go from shy to being, feeling like you can be yourself? Because I think that's an important path, especially for young people, but for everybody is, can you walk them through that path of like maybe little things that they can do? Because they're not going to all of a sudden jump into Every, everything. There has to be baby right. steps to it. Right. Can you walk us through that a little bit? Absolutely. It's a, it's a great question. Something that I'm actually writing a book about that very subject. 
an inspirational book based on my life. I mean, it is my life, but also with the tool, not just to be a memoir, but to be a tool where people can find out, see the journey and maybe copy some of the things I did and make it their own and, and put it into their own life so they can be bold and, and be big. And that book's going to come out this year. So I can tell you one of the things I did is I spent a lot of time by myself knowing who I am and what I like to do. So one of the things that happens when you're young is you have friends, you have siblings, you have parents, you have all these people telling you what to do. You know, and you can't get away from that because you're a young person and you're under 18. And sometimes what you say doesn't matter, unfortunately. But if your parents tell you to clean the room, then clean the room. You got to respect your parents, right? So you have a lot of people telling you what you should do. That doesn't mean that you can't also do things you want to do. And I mean, away from your friends, away from social media, away from your teachers and, and your parents, and even people who love you very much, who mean the best for you. Go to your own private space and journal. That was one of the biggest things, journaling. Start a journal, write your thoughts down, write weird things, weird dreams you've had. Don't judge yourself. You have to do this alone because if you do this around people, they're going to judge you. They're going to laugh and you're going to get hurt or whatever. Your feelings are going to get hurt. Maybe even your parents won't understand it, you know. So I went through that whole phase of like, nobody understands me. Nobody knows me. Nobody cares about me. And then so that just drove me to journal. Today, you can voice memo. I do voice memos while I'm walking. I'm outside walking to the gym or I'm at, and I get inspiration or I have, I have a, a emotion that comes up that's deep and I don't know how to deal with it. So I, I record it onto my phone and I just do a voice memo. You never maybe have to look at that again. You never have to listen to it again, but writing or recording your thoughts down will help get them out of your head and onto something else and outside of you. And it gives you more perspective. I feel like it, it's like an addict. You start cleaning that attic full of gunk, full of self-doubts, full of worries, full of all these thoughts. On top of it, you have hormones and body issues. And that never stops because when you're older, you also get body issues, right? So, but you're young, you have these other things raging and, and you might be in love and this and all this stuff. Get it out of your head and onto paper or onto a recorded device. Get it out. Write, 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 write. Journal, journal, journal. Speak out your dreams, your goals, what you want. That'd be the first important thing. Art, because, basically. Yeah. You're talking about like, like get some sort of art and expression. Uh, yeah, def- I would even say- so it's not just in your head, it's out deep. somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. I would say first, yeah, journaling. And then wherever that express comes out to, it could be art, drawing, you know. Uh, do something that's by yourself. It's not watching a movie. Movies are awesome too. But something that you're creating, that you're putting out, output. And make sure it's, it's between you and yourself. And you're really starting to know yourself and, it, and allow yourself to be you. I was like, that's the most basic first thing. I'd say second would be then start looking at other things you like. Like go to the movies by yourself. Watch a movie. Maybe none of your friends want to go see the movie with you. Go see it by yourself anyways. Draw that picture. Listen to that song. Maybe everybody says it's not cool. You have to do things that make you happy. It starts with small incremental things because if you get it as a kid, it's going to stick with you as an adult because then as an adult, that, that'll translate to marrying the person you want rather than the person your parents say is good for you or getting the job that makes you happy rather than the job that would make your society, people, your culture around you happy, right? So it starts asserting your individuality and what you truly desire starts young and starts small. It starts very simple. I feel like so many kids these days are on Snapchat or listening to music and these things are not bad, but they're all simply on these platforms or listening to this certain type of media, watching this certain type of show based upon what their, their friends think of them, what the people around them tell them they should be into. And it's okay to not like something that everyone else likes. I like weird movies. I'm a total nerd. I grew up watching uh, playing video games and reading comic books. Nobody knows that about me. I'm a sci-fi geek. I still am in the privacy of my own home. (laughs) So that would be one of the things that that's the process. And then just let those two things translate like journaling and putting your thoughts out and hearing yourself out, whether that's in a prayer form, written form, spoken form, and then it would be creating on that and, and delving into what makes you happy. Maybe you're not the athletic minded 
type or you didn't make it to the basketball team, but you love playing basketball. Well, then play basketball. Don't let anybody give you permission. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, you can't do this. Fine, don't play on the team. Or if you really want to play on the team, practice until you get good enough and play on that team. A lot of yeah. discipline and practice. There's nothing you can't learn. That's the thing that I think society, and I say society not to blame this nameless, faceless thing, but I would say it's more of like a common agreement that either you got it or you don't. And I don't believe in that. Maybe Absolutely. you have a little bit of it, but if you've got a desire for it, you can get it by hard work, blood, sweat, and tears. Absolutely. Yeah. I had um, Sydney Smith, who is a, a double amputee who runs the Ironman triathlon. I had oh, him on like, um, like two episodes ago and wow. you know, we talked about mindset for like an hour Ooh. and it's just an incredible guy. And part of what you have to do in all of this stuff, because I love what you gave, like the idea of like putting it out there and like, is you have to risk. And we're so like risk averse. Like we just, we don't want to risk things because then we can fail. But like yeah. you said, like the Carol Dweck um, book mindset is you have to be willing to fail and then get better and then try again. And that's where confidence comes from. You, you know, I think you would, right. people would say you're very confident, but that only comes from it is confidence is not that I won't lose. It's that if I lose, I'll be okay. Exactly. If I fail, I'll be okay. And exactly. that's what you need to think about too, is like, I'm going to try this and you know, I'm going to go out for the team, which takes a lot of guts and you might be the worst, the last one picked. Yeah. Okay, well, then I can, I have to get better. And like, they just right. that idea to get back on the horse is really, really crucial. I think mm -hmm. that you, it's not, and you also have experience. to risk, put it yeah. out there for people to criticize because some people will criticize it and some people will love it. And that's, that's, right. that's just, you, you can't please everybody. A friend to everybody is a friend to yeah. nobody. Exactly. And at least of all, a friend to yourself. Yeah. And it goes back to your selfness is not, is not selfishness. I, I think that, I mean, I was raised very strictly religious and there's nothing wrong with that. I love it. But I was raised like, if you think about yourself too much, then it's, it's apart from God and it's, it's, you have to put others before you. Yes, service to others is so important. Serving, helping others is so important. But if you are broken inside and you, don't, and you're, you keep pushing your own self away to then serve others, you're giving people an empty, an empty glass. Yeah. You don't have anything in there to give. And fill sometimes your, you fill your glass yourself. so you can give it to someone else. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, so it's I, very important. And, and I fill my glass with all kinds of stuff. You know, yeah. like I, spending, there's been days where I don't leave the house. I have my internet connection. I stay home. I have my cat and I love it. Not for fear of going outside, but because, I mean, I'll go to the gym to leave the house. That's it. But because I'm like, I, I love luxuriating in my home, in my atmosphere of just me, my husband, and just, you know, in our, our home life. It's so important because on the flip side, I'm out. And I'm everybody, like everyone shaking hands, talking to people, speaking, traveling, it, tear, it, it can wear you down. My life is very much out there and I love that as well. But finding that balance is so important. I feel like when you're at school, you're forced to be outside, right? You don't have the luxury of staying home. So if you're in school, you gotta be out there. So you have to be able to deal with so society, social, social constructs and so society, like your social, makeup and, and who you are in school, your teachers and your other students and your parents. So you're forced to deal with that. But then when you're out after school or before school, find time to deal with yourself, just you, not your friends. Nothing wrong with being with friends. Friends are great, but I feel like too many people are so reliant on what their friends think that you're losing. What do you think? Like, what do you really think about it? Be real with yourself. If you, you're faced with a decision, should I do this or should I do that? What do you really want? And give yourself permission to want that and to like that and to dream. Dream big. Don't let anybody tell you you can't achieve those dreams. I mean, I've been, I've been on the same path since I was five years old. Five years old, I decided I want to do this. I started in theater. Uh, I was a bossy little girl. I told my mom, make my outfit look nice for my first ever play which was a Christmas play, five years old, singing, dancing, acting. And I said, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. And there was no doubt in my mind that this is what I would do. In fact, I thought I would achieve it much sooner. I thought, oh, I would never go to regular school because I'm going to totally be, you know, doing this for the rest of my life. And, you know, I went to regular school and I said, okay, well, I'm still going to be doing this for the rest of my life. And then, you know, you start getting older and older and I go, oh, well, a lot of people are telling me I should not do this for the rest of my life or I sh I'm supposed to be somewhere else, but I'm going to keep doing this 
for the rest of my life. I set it up. I don't care if I'm 50 years old. By the time I make it, I'm going to make it. And luckily it's happened before I'm 50. You know, I've, I've achieved a lot of things off my bucket list and I'm not stopping. And I want other people to, to, to believe in themselves and to go after what they want. They were created to do such incredible things. We are spiritual beings that can create universes for ourselves and inspire others so much. Yet we we're content to just be, sit, be, play nice, be quiet, don't cause too much trouble, don't scare anybody, don't get into trouble, don't be fearful, like be fearful of, of hurting people's feelings. You know, be polite, be kind, but take no shit. Stand up yeah. for yourself. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's like my issue, I guess, with like self-esteem is, is the idea that, that kind of promotes the idea that um, you're fine the way you are. And I tell my students, no, you're not. You're not even close. <laughs> you are a bundle of unrealized potential. You could be so much more than you are. Because if a kid's bummed out and you're saying, this is, this is as good, good as it gets. Get. Like, ugh, like, come on. Like, no, you can be so big, whatever your version of big is. And I Absolutely. think that that's a much better message for, for kids to- Oh uh, yeah, for anyone about I agree. Before. I'm so glad you're a teacher telling your students that because we live in this age of contentment, this age of just settle down, two and a half kids, white picket fence, whatever that means, right? It can be just, just get a normal job, fly under the radar. Each generation has their own version of that middle class mentality. And it's wrong. Be a big superstar. Be a big, huge being. Create yeah. something wild and crazy. How do you think people who got famous did it? Not by being normal, not by flying under the radar. I, I, I even go, it goes down to also, here's a huge thing. When I wake up in the morning, I do my hair, my makeup, my clothing to the way where if someone met me, I would look like who I am, which is a celebrity singer songwriter. Mm. And if, if you meet me and I don't look like that, I feel like I'm not representing who I am. Because first of all, when I put on more jewelry and, and even this is like a little bit more low key, but I put my red lipstick on, I fluff out my Afro, I got my diamonds on, you know, I'm, I'm out there because that makes me feel more confident. I look the way I feel, I feel the way I look. I'm presenting an image to the public that, that makes me feel more confident. It's for me first and foremost. Also, if I made a fan on the street and they wanna take a selfie, I'm like, oh, thank God I look good today. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to dress the way you wanna be perceived. I see a lot of people, this isn't a judgment on people dressing slutty or this or that. I don't believe in all that stuff. No. I mean, yeah, you want to look decent and, and, and look good, clean clothes. You know, don't show too much skin, especially if you're young. I mean, you do want to dress that it, that something that is, is relatively um, like a good presentation of who you are. I do believe in that. But we're just talking basics, colors. When I look around, I see most people in gray, black, dark blue. And I'm like, what happened to colors? There's so many colors in the rainbows you could wear. I don't care if you're in the science field, you can wear colors and that will make you feel more confident. When you wear a bright shirt or a cool colored outfit or something like a piece in your hair or as a guy, you have like cool glasses or something funny that, that's funky as a, as a sort of like a, a you know, accoutrement, like something weird around on you. People, that's a conversation starter first and foremost. And also it'll force you to, to communicate with people because people are going to comment on it. And most people are afraid of that, but you shouldn't be afraid of that. It's a great, great conversation starter. When someone says, oh, I like your hair, you know, I go, oh, thank you. Cause I'm confident enough to know, yeah, my hair looks different than most people, but that's okay. It makes me feel good. And it, it's breaking down this, this thing like I'm supposed to look like everyone, I'm supposed to blend in, I'm supposed to be quiet, seen and not heard, or not even seen and not, not even heard. I just, I hate that. That's what so much is happening in society. And the people who take chances, like you said, who are not afraid to fail, who are not afraid of, of being laughed at, those are the people who succeed. You have to make bold choices to succeed. Make bold choices now while you're young. Even if you're older listening to this, make Absolutely. bold choices. But the, the more you do it, it's like a muscle. It gets easier and easier to do. I mean, I know I'm saying this like from my perspective, but I mean, as a kid, I would wear weird things in my hair and kids would laugh at me. And they made fun of me. One day I wore, I braided my hair in, in this one braid and I tied rubber bands around it and it hung like right in front of my face and the rest of my hair was in a ponytail. And this kid said, it looks weird. And he made fun of me and I, and I was hurt. I told the teacher, I said, hey, 
this is fourth grade. I said, um, I said, Hey, this kid is, he's making fun of me. He's laughing at me for my hair. And can you please tell him not to do it? And she says, well, it does look really weird. You do kind of look like a unicorn with that thing on your head. And you know, that's kind of the worst nightmare as a kid. I think yeah. you're asking an adult for help, you know, in, in, in helping you assert yourself as an individual and the adult agrees with the bully. Right. Well, that didn't stop me. I've worn all kinds of weird stuff in my hair and on my body, as we know, yeah. Google. And I love it. Yeah. It's an expression. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that goes for people who are, you know, you could be a cashier and just, as long as you're you yeah. and maybe colors aren't your thing or fashion is not your thing, whatever it is, just do your thing, whatever it is. That's so I know right. our, our time is limited. I just want to kind of close with this. Um, I noticed that when you're talking, Joy, you're very careful to not be like misconstrued. Like, like if you, 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 you're very careful when you say like, you know, if, if what you wear matters, then you're like, well, and I'm not saying that you can't wear this. Like you, I, I see that you're, you are careful. Like you're not yes. trying to hurt people. And no. It's, it's very interesting to me because like if someone knows you, let's just say someone gets to know you. Yeah. And then you, you, uh, you come out and like, a, like, and you say that you're for Trump. Okay. Yeah. And they know you well and they go, well, they have it in their head that they dislike Trump. He's a bad guy, whatever it is. And then they know you well. And then they have to reconcile these two things. Yeah. What I see happen a lot more, and I'm just using Trump because that's a perfect, easy example. But sure. Sure. Is, oh, I thought she was a good person. <laughs> yeah. Not maybe Trump supporters aren't what I thought they were. Do you know right. what I mean? Like, oh, like absolutely. you could know oh, someone yeah. for, for years and then you find out something about them. And instead of saying, well, I guess my, my mentality about what that is, perception, yeah. it's that person. And everything I know is wrong. It's so interesting because I, I think that we have to promote that people look at how does this person treat me and what have I witnessed firsthand mm -hmm. of how they treated other people. That's right. Not, not even secondhand of this person was mean to me because you don't know what happened yeah. and how they took that and things That's like right. that. You have to treat people directly of how were they to me and then yeah. how have I witnessed them treat others? And that's what needs to, to, that's, that needs to get promoted. It's a hundred percent. Oh, well, I couldn't agree with you more. A hundred and ten percent. That is the truth because, you know, so many things we can judge people on based upon their religion. And especially if it's a minority religion, if it's not mm -hmm. one of the major religious views that there's all kinds of confusion. Like, oh, well, what is that? That's weird. Or oh, yeah. what, what, why do they look like that or dress that way or speak that way or pray that way or not pray or whatever. Right. Or a lack of religion. Someone who's religious can say, Oh, that's weird. You don't believe in God. Like you're, you're messed up. There's all these things like the way someone looks, a culture it's, it's, it's confusion. I would say not confusion. It's more like it's, it's um, misunderstanding and misunderstanding can go to fear very easily, right? If I don't understand it, I can be afraid of it because if I don't understand it, it means it could hurt me. Now I've traveled 25 countries. I've been around multiple religious views, multiple cultures, colors, types of food, types of thinking, you know, rich, poor, everything, what have you on purpose. I've, I've seen my country and the countries of others because I wanted that perspective. I'll tell you, it's really hard when you travel to be racist or misogynistic or, you know, Xena, Xena, whatever, all these terms, right? Uh -huh. Because you start to realize everybody's a human being. They express themselves in different ways. Humanity is varied and different. And I don't have to agree with someone's choices to love them. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing I tell my, my followers and my audiences you don't have to agree with what I believe in to love me and like me. You can like my music and, and hate my politics or hate my religious yeah. views or, or not like my husband or I, that's fine, but you're not going to beat me down and try to change my mind by saying you're wrong. That's how you cut conversation. The worst, like the, if you want to end a conversation and end a friendship with someone, start with a sentence, you are wrong. Cause I guarantee you, you're not going to convince them. And plus, if it's their personal choice, it's not wrong. If it's their personal opinion, it's never wrong. You can say, I don't agree with your opinion. Here's mine. That's a conversation starter. But negativity, I and mean, what we see on Twitter and a lot of social media, it's you're wrong, I hate you, F you, blah, 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 right? And it just cuts down communication. We even see that the left and the right in politics. We see that 
amongst celebrities in the public eye that fight. We see that amongst divorced couples. We see that amongst kids and groups that don't now are no longer friends. Oh, it's because you did me wrong and you're wrong now. Instead of this coming together, what more like me are you or what's right about somebody? Why don't you start with, well, you're right for that. Like I may not follow your religious views, but you're right in having them. Because start from common ground, them. right. Start, start from, from common, common yeah. ground, yeah. we're so similar. I always say too, if aliens attack this world, right? It was an alien invasion. Suddenly all these little stereotypes and all this little prejudice would melt away. We'd be like humans against aliens. Yeah. So let's pretend like that's happening and just be humans again. Yep. And, and the, the, the diversity, including diversity of thought, is so yes. important to embrace yes. in society. It's the best. It is our strength. Yeah. I love diversity. That's why I love big cities. I mm -hmm. love being in, you know, I love being in New York and Los Angeles because it's diverse. There's more people here. I love going to London. I love going to places where there's a lot of different types of cultures and learning from those cultures. And I actually pride myself on having friends in those cultures. I want a friend of every religion, friend from every culture, from every country, from every different you know, type of person and type of thinking as well, ideology. I want to understand. Understanding does nothing but erase fear because now when you understand, you don't have to be afraid of what you don't know. It's like the monster under your bed, right? It's dark. You don't know if there's a monster in your bed, so you don't look. So it keeps that fear alive. As soon as you turn on the light and look under the bed and there's nothing there, the fear dissipates. So stop reacting on fear and, and putting these generalities in there. Instead, try to find out common ground. If I don't know something and, and people are telling me I should be afraid of it or it's wrong for some reason, the first thing I do is not listen to them because what do they know? But just like you said, find out for myself, read a book on the subject, look it up, go to the official website on the subject or the person's look at interviews that that person has done to find out their thinking and the way they react and make my own judgments based on that. And if you can meet the person, have a conversation with them, right? I mean, that's I've had people ideal, say, yeah. that's, that's the biggest thing. You know, if I've had people say, oh, I thought you were blah, 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 blah. And I'm so sorry. I wanted to let you know that now after following you for a while, or I saw your interview or I listened to your music or whatever it is, I now have a different perception of you. And I just want to apologize. And I say, thank you. That's awesome. They're like, please, will you forgive me? Because I was spreading bad news about you. I was like, that's fine. I don't care. You know, I mean, I'm not going to block you. Tweet something nice about me and all is forgiven, you know, because it's, it's no, there's no big war amongst individuals. The war is for us to be able to assert our rights and to be able to, to be ourselves and, and to have human rights. That's, if you're going to fight a war, if you're going to be against something bad, fight against legislation that stops human rights. You know, pick up a political cause that's, that's close to you or a cultural cause or, uh, you know, an artistic cause and create in that. Find something that, there is things to fight about. There are, there are injustices in this world, but find a real injustice. It's not amongst other human beings who are just trying to live their life. That's not where the, the war is. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, I know you gotta go, so I just wanna say thank you. Do, yeah. you know, I'm just a high school teacher kind of throwing this thing together. So uh, I love it. I hope you it grows. And I really, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it a you lot. Got Joy um, Villa on. You know, I yeah. hit number one on Billboard, iTunes, Amazon. So you got me to come on, and I've had such a good time with you. And this is Thank this you. is really great. And keep doing what you're doing. Being a high school teacher is not easy, but it's one of the biggest, most beautiful jobs on the planet. You're shaping young minds. Thank you. All right. So that is Joy Villa.